and that we would share some things that I studied that would encourage you on your way, and certainly on the behalf of one who may have as yet put Christ on with the new life by rendering yourself a servant of his through the teaching and preaching and understanding and obedience of the gospel to be baptized in water for remission of your sins. The Lord will add you to his church. You can go on your way as to the unit rejoicing. We do want to be mindful of the fact that since we last met that many have had to answer the call of death. And yet God is still good. I had some extended family members that had three deaths within five days. And they all were of age, some were young, some were still older, some were somewhere in between. But uh, another indication that we do not remain here forever. So we will do all that we can to make our calling and election sure. So that when, not if, we stand before the judgment of Christ, we will be able to do so standing on his word. Genesis chapter 6 is our point of departure, if you will, for this this morning. Genesis chapter 6 is a very familiar uh, passage. This is Genesis chapter 6. And I want to uh, use uh, the latter part of what we were reading from around verse 11 or so and beyond. Uh, let me get over there real quick and uh, point out uh, the basis of our subject and thoughts for a little while this morning. Um, in Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, the Bible says, The earth also was corrupt before God. And the earth was filled with violence. God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me. For the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. If you're writing, the subject is Does God cause? All natural disasters? Does God cause all natural disasters? Since he's in control of everything. Does God cause all natural disasters? Since he is in control of everything. We are familiar with Genesis chapter 6, Genesis chapter 7 in particular, where this particular passage gives us an introduction, I'm a paraphrase, to what came next, which was the flood. And we still have floods, even now. And so the question becomes, is God behind all this destruction that's going on? I do want to also point out, as you saw even in Genesis, even though Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, floods still came. Maybe just by way of reference, Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 to verse 27. I'll paraphrase, I was going to read it, but uh, I'll just paraphrase. Matthew 7, 24 through 27, there toward the end of that great sermon on the mount from Jesus. Ah. Uh, Jesus begins to say some things, and he begins to make an illustration of those who would obey him and those who would not obey him. Uh, first, those that would obey him, he begins by showing the illustration that they 
they obey him, but then uh, the winds came, which means a storm. Floods came, beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded on a rock. Then you keep on reading, and it says, now those that hear me, but don't obey me, storm come. Point right here is, rather you must say to one sinner, storm come. The storm comes to everybody in the house. As we well know in Florida, hurricanes don't say, let me see now, let me see, where can I go? Let me see, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch the storm. Hurricanes don't do that. They go where they want to go. They all the spaghetti stuff, people don't, they got an idea where they think it's going to go. But it's going somewhere else. Anyway, storm comes to those as well who don't obey me. And beat upon that house. And the book says, Great was the fall upon it. Why? Because it was founded on the sand. It was not founded on the solid foundation. So it's crucial to remember and ever keep in mind that no matter who you are or where you are, matter of fact, where you're from, stars are coming. But the question becomes is God behind? All these stars. In the church of Christ, 2019 in particular, y'all know this, but let me just remind and share with those who have never heard this in this particular formation before. There are three types of stars. Three types of stars. Three types of stars. Storms that we cause. That was the Genesis 6 storm, the flood. That was a storm that was caused by man. But at any rate, Storms that we cause. Storms caused by others. And then there are storms that God allows. Three types of storms. Storms that we cause. Storms caused by others. And then there are storms that God allows. Then again, Another angle, you either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or on your way into a storm. I said you either in a storm, coming out of a storm, or on your way back in to a storm. No matter who you are, waiting from. So we understand that there are three types of storms, and then there's three formats or formations of storms. But now let's look here. God has used as the example we gave him storms for his benefit, for his cause, and for his purpose. But the question becomes, does all these storms still come from God, or is it something or somewhere else? You know, many times you've heard the phrase before, well, it's just an acts of God. You ever heard that? Take that for what it's worth, but now we got to be careful. There are many things that God does for humanity that He gets no credit for. I'm saying again. There are many things that God does on the behalf of humanity as a whole, and He gets no credit for. In contrast, there are many things that happens to mankind, to humanity, that God gets blamed for. He had nothing to do with it. He had nothing to do with it. Y'all right? We want to be mindful and ever mindful and careful. Look, if you will, in the same book of Genesis chapter number 9. Look, if you will, in Genesis chapter number 9. Let's just see. If all these things in this, you know, we know that there are floods. There's some places that are prone to floods that you are aware of that floods. Then there are many times places that are unusual that have floods. Uh, but the question becomes, is God behind all these floods and all this stuff like this? Right? Well, let's look at Genesis chapter number 9. This will begin with verse number 9 and go down to verse number 17. In Genesis chapter number 9, um, and verse number 9 through verse number uh, 17. Uh, Genesis chapter 9 and verse number 9 through verse 17. Genesis chapter 9, verse number 9 through verse 
17. And I, behold, I will establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you. God talking to Noah. And every living creature that is with you of the fowl, of the cattle, and of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out from the ark to every beast of the earth. Genesis chapter 9 verse 11. And I will establish my covenant with you. Neither shall all flesh be cut off anymore by the waters of the flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. Y'all see that? But some said, yeah, but Johnson, but they just had a flood in Madrid the other day, and they flood over here, and a flood over there. What you mean? God is saying that I'm not going to do it. He didn't say that we weren't going to have it. The implications is, he's not going to do it like he did before. But we still don't have it. And we still do have it. But just because we have them, I want you to understand, that don't necessarily mean it. When it comes from God, you know because he takes before and after. I say again. Yeah. When it comes from God, Amen. you are not. He will take before and God. You will see you in another example we gave you about the fox. Same thing. When it's from him in that way, you know. He will take his stuff. First of all, Miriam. And God said, this is a token of the covenant. Y'all know this. Which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual, continuous, non-ending generations. I do set my bow in the cloud. Oh, it is no change. And it shall be for a token of a covenant between me and the earth. And it shall come to pass, Lord have mercy, when I bring a cloud over the earth, that the ball shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. So the flood that God used is different than the kind of stuff that we have going on today. But what God used, he used for what we understand was because of man's indiscretions of sin. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Amen. So what's happening now is not necessarily coming from God at all. We just saw, we just read it. When it comes from him, you will know it. Verse 16. And the bow shall be in the cloud, and I will look upon it, and I remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh and upon earth. And God said unto Noah, this is the token of the covenant which I have established between me and all flesh that's upon the earth. And then the question comes up, what else, what else, what else, what else? Yes. What about sickness? What about disease? Uh, yeah, many times. This is 752. Let's look at Exodus chapter number 9. There's two sets of suffering I'm going to show you real quick here. In Exodus chapter number 9, beginning with verse number 8. In Exodus chapter number 9, beginning with verse number 8. Exodus chapter number 9, verse 8. Two sets of suffering between you. Uh, one is those that are punishing God's people, and God is punishing the people at the same time, too. Both of those have something in common, and it's called sin. Anyway, Exodus 9, verse 8. And the Lord said to Moses and unto Aaron, Hello, Aaron. <laughs> Take to you hands full of ashes of the furnace, and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven. In the sight of Pharaoh, and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt. Y'all are kind of picture this happening here. Um, and it shall be, and it shall be a boil breaking forth with blends upon. 
upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt. And they took ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh. And Moses sprinkled it toward heaven. And it became a boil breaking forth with lands upon man and upon beast. Here we go. We'll pick the first number 11. You know, today is September 10, tomorrow is September 11. So some of the passages, as I look at it, I pay close attention to verse number 11. The same was with Genesis chapter 9, verse 11 as well. Exodus chapter number 9, where we are, verse number 11. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils that was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. You do understand the difference in that, don't you? You had the Israelites there and you had the Egyptians. But only the Egyptians were stricken with the boils and not So much so they couldn't even stand up. I mean, it was, it was, it was all over the place. Watch this. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh 12, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses several times. He told, God told Moses, I'm a hard Pharaoh's heart. Tell them, I said, let's go, let y'all go, that y'all may come and worship me. But then I'm a hard heart, he ain't gonna do it. And then all these calamities are gonna come. Let's continue. Verse number 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and do something that Pharaoh and his folks in, in Egypt can't do. Stand before Pharaoh. Say unto him, Thus shall the Lord God of the Hebrews let my people go that they may serve me. For I will at like this time send all my plagues upon that heart. And upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that, that I want you to know so. Which one was to know? That thou may know that there is none like me in all the earth. God has got all by Himself. It's going to be His way or no way. Every time, all the time. And everything else, and everybody's got to get in line. It, it doesn't mean, beloved, that you won't have difficulties. But what I want you to see is this very type of storms. Storms that we cause. Storms caused by others. Storms that God allowed. Let's, let's, let's continue. He said, what about, what about the fires and all this other stuff? But you some droughts and all this thing, all this other stuff. Well, let's look quickly at Amos chapter number four. I, I, I wasn't sure, but let me just let me just let me just run over there with you. Amos 4, 6 through 12. Amos 4, this will cover a lot of ground. Amos, 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 Amos 4, 6 through 12. Amos, Amos 4, 6 through 12. Amos 4. Amos 4, 6 through 12. So, Amos 4, verse 6. Uh, and I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities and want of bread in all your places. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Israel, over and over again. I also was looking at Sunday a little bit uh, at Joshua as, as well as Deuteronomy. Uh, there's so many judges. There's so many places that you can see where Israel, God's people, will cry out to him when they were being punished for sin in his various formations of storms that came in life to come. God would hear that cry and he lessened the pain or removed the punishment. Just wait there for a while and then the next thing you know. Verse number, verse number seven. Verse number seven. Amos four. Verse number, verse number seven. And also, I am withholding the rain from you when there were yet three months to the harvest. And I caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rain upon 
and the peace whereupon they reign not with you. So two or three cities uh, wandered unto one city to drink water, but they were not satisfied. Yet they have not returned unto me, said the Lord. You know, storms in, in, in biblical formations, they weren't just God was bored looking for something to do. He was trying to get Israel's attention. He was trying to let them know when they had strayed and how he wanted them to come back and how he, God, the infinite sovereign God, had control and power of everything and everyone. Lesson for us to take. I, 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 we reference Second Chronicles 7 14, so I'm going to leave it alone, but we need to be mindful. The book is right, beloved. Everything that we need to know in terms of instructions, we got it right here in this book. There's no need to wish, wonder, or even worry. It's all right there. And sometimes the answer to the things that we are dealing with, if we look at it, we say, okay, it's one of those two types of storms. Storm that we call them this storm. Storm we call by others. This is something God allowed. Let's continue. Verse number, uh, verse number nine, I think I am. I have smitten you with blessings and mildew when your gardens of your vineyards and your fig trees and your other trees increase in the puzzle worm devoured them. Yet ye have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have sent among you the pestilence after the manner of Egypt. Hmm. Your young men have I slain with the sword and have taken away your horses, and I have made uh, the state of your tent to come upon your nostrils, yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as firemen plucked out of the burning, yet you have not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Therefore, what's therefore, therefore, therefore is therefore the proceeding of what he said earlier. And beyond, quite frankly. Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, because I will do this unto thee. Prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. God is a just God, but he can be when we push him. Be a God of wrath. That's why sometimes you see it talks about the great and terrible God. It's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of a just God. Sin is always and will always be recompensed in and by the sight of God. Uh, as I hurry, 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 as I hurry, 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 as I hurry, hurry. Uh, just uh, real quick, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I mean, this is a story. This helps us to understand sometimes that. Uh, Things just happen. These are sometimes storms. This is a reference here to let us know that sometimes God just allows certain things to happen. Sometimes He allows certain things to happen. Uh, so those are storms that God allowed. Uh, in Ecclesiastes 9, verse 10 through 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10 through verse number 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10 through verse number 13. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thy goes. Do what you can while you can, because the time is coming when you ain't gonna need it. Verse 11, another 9 11, here we go. I returned and saw under the sun that the race is not given to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, neither yet bread to the wise. Nor yet riches of men of understanding, nor yet favor to men of skill, but time and chance happeneth to them all. God allowed things to take shape. He allowed some things to unfold as they are, including storms. So, 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 I don't jump on folks, sister Brown. Or here comes another act of God. Here comes. Wait a minute, huh? But I don't, don't, so don't go jumping off of tomorrow. But you just understand. Some of the stuff that haven't got in my the, the earth sometimes is trying to tell us, I had enough of y'all. Y'all better stop messing with me. And the earth does sometimes respond to how we treat it. I 
<clears throat> but there are things that happen that God allowed. Verse number 12. For man also knoweth not his time, as the fish that are taken in an evil net, and as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time, when they fall suddenly upon them. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemed great unto me. Finally, blessings can come on the other side of storms. I say blessings can come on the other side of storms. And I want you to understand something. Now, there are, there are, there are storms in, in the sense that we started off showing how there are global storms, or these uh, uh, earthly storms, but there are also personal storms too. Individual storms. For, for example, uh, here's, here's, a, here's a double contrast example of personal storms uh, that you're going to see uh, when you go back and look at it. Uh, that uh, sometimes it's a storm that we cause, and then also that can also to others be a storm that's caused by others. I'm thinking about Jonah. Jonah caused his storm in the sea. But to the others who are going drown with the boat sinking, what the storm caused by others and that other was Jonah. And that storm went on that up and did that up until they got rid of Jonah. Because he was the problem of the storm they all followed. So there are storms that we cause, like Jonah. And then there are sometimes, if you're close enough, storms caused by others, and you can get caught up in it too. And then, but yeah, sometimes God lets some things play out as they may. But the key is to do what you can to get ready and be ready. Because time is short. I've proven that in our text this morning. John 9, I want to show an example that there are lessons sometimes even to so you remember when the young man was born blind in John chapter 9? In John chapter 9, the young man was born blind. I, I like that one because it shows sometimes that the mentality as a, as a hasty to my seat. Uh, it, it, it shows sometimes the mentality if one is too careful, if you just really look and approach things uh, in, in a strange, uh, peculiar uh, way. In John 9, 1, uh, in John 9, 1, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man. In John chapter 9, in verse 1, and as Jesus passed by, he saw a man. I don't know. He saw a man which was blind from birth. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not going to do the whole thing like this, but I want you to see he saw a man that was blind from birth. This man was always in darkness his whole life from birth up to the time Jesus saw him. You know what I'm saying? He can't see Jesus. But he's a man. But he's been learned from verse 2. And his disciples, Jesus' disciples, asked him, saying, Master, who did sin? This man or his parents? That he was born blind. I always look at that passage. Wait a minute. They asked him, saying, Master, who did see this man or his parents that he was born blind? Now, I understand asking about the parents. I don't understand. Are y'all following me? Sometimes I say something got to be weird. <laughs> Sometimes folks go through stuff and we not forget, we make the wrong assessment. This man, but he was born blind. Babies, though, we got to get a hold of the best of what they see. And we do. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We mess them up. Everybody come in a clean plate. And then you manage to get this ball over. It happened to you, and it happened to me, too. Anyway. How can he see it before he was born? Anyway, Jesus answered, even this man seeing nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. Sometimes storm that you go through is that God may be glorified when he brings you through the storm. This young man was so special before he was born. God allowed him to be born blind. 
that Jesus would come along after this man is grown up and cross paths with him. I must work more to him, verse 4. I must work more to him that while in the state, that because night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the land of the world. And this man is walking and have lived in a world of darkness. Verse 6. And when he had thus spoken, no, no, I missed verse 5. Walking in the world and the light of the world. Verse 6. This is what happens. When he, Jesus, had just spoken, had thus spoken, he spat on the ground made clay of the still, and anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay in another uh, uh, formation of making man. The Bible tells us Jesus took the man by the hand and led him out of town. Now, the man blind, he ain't seen Jesus, he ain't seen nobody. But he trusted him enough to let him take him by the hand and take him out of town. I don't miss that. And then the spinning, wait a minute, now hold on, let me see Take my jacket off. We, we, we go spin. That's what we know now. <laughs> well, what are you gonna do? Because you know, we, thank you. <laughs> but he trusted him. Spare the ground. Watch this. May still out of the plate. Now we have verse number one. Verse number seven. He says, uh, "Go wash in the pool of Shalom, which is by interpretation sin." And he went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. I don't know, he doesn't give us the indications of how he got there, but he, some kind of way he was blind still. After Jesus made the clay, filled his eyes, told him to go wash. And then he went and washed, and he came to see. There's glorious things that can happen on the other side of calamities. If we would just trust in the Lord. Let, let, me, let me let you read on. Uh, um, uh, uh, you can keep, you can read the rest of it on uh, uh, the I, I want to I want to make these last two comparisons. I'm not going to be able to read them, but I'll just make a note of them. You know, I, 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 I just write these down, and I'll just give you one verse out of them, out of each of them, uh, in different time. Just write these down, please, and read them later. I'm just going to reference one verse. Job chapter Job chapter one, verse eight to verse twenty-two. Job chapter one, uh, verse eight to verse twenty-two. Job chapter one, verse eight. Uh, God has this conversation with Satan. God says unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job that's not like him in the earth? A perfect and upright man, one that fears God and is you with evil. That's Job. Job was righteous. Job was minding his own business. Job was blessed with wealth, health, family, service, cattle, all this stuff. And he had a, a following of God that was so close. Mind his own business. Then these storms that God allowed came. One on top of the other. You all remember reading that? As one was speaking, then another one came and picked up the, and, Well, you know, almost like they interrupted them. Let me tell you what just happened over here. And before that was finished, wait a minute, let me tell you what happened over here. Y'all fine. And then the Bible says, Yo! Ripped his mantle was like a rope. Joe prayed and praised God. Naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return to thither. Blessed be. I don't necessarily behave that way when my storm was coming, but I, I appreciate you, Brother Joe. I, I appreciate you giving us a framework to do. I don't know what you're saying. I can't say I do that, Joe. I just tell you I just, I don't know. I don't know. But I will say this. As we go through all of the different things that took, I told him all the time. You know, his friends came, sat there uh, for seven days, stared at him, couldn't identify him. And they started talking about him bad. Woo! So, boy, 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 you, you, you done this stuff, boy. Look at man. Why don't you just go clean? What did you do? I mean, man, you messed up. Man, you got me in the trouble. What did you do? They, they, they based what they saw and based the storm of Job's life off of what they saw. They had to do with it. I read what they had to do with it. Verse 8. God knew Job better than Job. God knew Satan better than Job. Something new Satan. No question about that. 
is what and you're hitting on top of that. You certainly know better than your friends. When you get over to the end uh, of Job, Job chapter number 42, if you make a note of Job chapter 42, verse 1 through verse number 10, and, and Job 42, verse 1 through verse 10, the essence of that is God uh, gives a final uh, a closing statement, and then he moves on, and he, he says to Job's friends, uh, Eli, I knew that is all fine, but you all did not say unto me uh, the things that was right like my servant Job did. Then he went on to say so many words, listen, you all need to make a sacrifice, and then uh, the Lord says, I don't want to hear from y'all. He would make sacrifice, and then let Job make the offering, and let Job pray for him. I'm right here. Y'all follow what I'm saying. So, 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 so these stories, when we, when we witness these stories, when we go through these stories, be mindful of how we're supposed to maneuver ourselves and manage ourselves in these stories. And then in Job, uh, in Job chapter number 42, uh, in verse uh, number 10, in Job 42, in verse number 10, uh, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he, Job, prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I, I like saying that because he gave Job double for his trouble. Yes. <laughs> but my Job had to go through what he had to go through to get there. And many times we're like, we don't want to go through. We look to go through stuff. But sometimes we have to go through what we don't want to get to what we do want. To make heaven home, we got to go through something. The devil has already declared, not only will I fight you for it, I'm going to fight you for it. Yeah. I said, the devil is not only saying, will I fight you for it, I'm going to fight you for it. I said, no, it's like my Bible class. Listen, we are people of peace, but we are always at war. Let's be clear. We are people of peace, but we are always at war. And then so, uh, I leave you with this in Matthew 8, 23 through 27. Uh, you remember the storm in Matthew 8, 20 through 27. There's other formations of it, of course. But in Matthew uh, chapter 8, when Jesus uh, got into a ship, his disciples followed him. Then the Bible says, a storm arose. But Jesus was down in the boat asleep on the pillow. And the boat is filling up with water. Can you picture that? The disciples, look. Pardon me. Look here, man. Why don't you wake up? Can't you see what fire happened? How you sleeping to all them? I'm going to go first of all, Jesus. How you sleeping to all them? Where we going? I said we're going to the other side. What's wrong? Sometimes it may seem like you ain't going to make it when you're going through these storms in life. But as long as you got Jesus on board, oh yeah. As long as you got Jesus on board, he is going to make sure that you arise safely to the other side. Now, in the grand scheme of things, the other side of us as humans on this side of eternity, the other side is the hereafter. That's the real other side that we should be looking for and aiming for. Down here is this, 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 whatever high up, temporary. But it's the hereafter for now. That's what it boils down to. Beloved, I pray this morning you've been encouraged. Do not be worried when disasters and storms come. They're going to come. Many of them are caused by man. You know, we are doing things on the earth, and the earth is responding. Now, you know what I mean? The fluctuations and all this stuff right here. We, we're doing stuff on the earth, the earth is responding. Yeah, right. We're we doing all we're doing. The earth say, okay, you want to dance? Let's dance. I'll play the music. Come on. Yeah. And here this morning, you want to be questioned like the process. Simple, but it's the same. You come by hearing the word, Romans 10, 17. You come by believing the same, Hebrews 11 and 6. Be able to repent, Acts 17, 30 and 31. Be able to confess the sweetest name of all time, Romans 10, 9. Hebrews 1, 8. Say what God said about his son. Hebrews 1, 8. And then we will be baptized in water for remission of your sins, Acts uh, chapter 22 and verse number 16, Acts chapter number 8, uh, verse 26 and verse number 39, Acts 2, 38 as well, Acts 8, 26 and 39, rather. The Bible teaches us that the Lord gives his spirit unto all of them that obey him, Acts chapter 5 and verse number 32. And so we're going to stand up your singers and begin singing, and as we stand up and begin singing, that is then your cue.
to come down here and have a seat. I do have one question, yes, sir, ma'am. Do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? If you answer the affirmative, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Any and everything you've ever done, seen, read, thought, dreamt, or whatever is washed away in the water we created with baptism. Do not allow the faults and flaws that you have to hold you back. We all have faults and we all have flaws. We all are always working through something. I don't want to tell you. The devil don't see to that. He's going to see to that. So, so, so the devil always is going to bother you because he wants you back. Because you the most prized thing that we all possess is our soul. And then perchance there may be one who knew the lost church. And you may have been dealing with storm, maybe like you made on the boat with John trying to fight it yourself. Relinquish that. Come out of the way of confession and prayer. Give it over to God. Cast all your cares on him for he careth for your soul. Stop fighting. Keep still. And let God fight your battles. Come now together we stand together. We say, God bless you. I should respond. One hand.